Um, hello um, and welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening um, to all our participants, to all our speakers and moderators who've joined us today um, from different parts of this, from different parts of the globe. Um, I welcome everyone to the day two of the Marketing to Children workshop. Uh, my name is Dr. Neha Jain and I'm a dentist and a public health researcher with the Public Health Foundation of India. I'm also affiliated with Riday in India as a coordinator for gym. On behalf of the entire organizing committee, the moderators and speakers of today's session, I'm very excited to see all of you here today. We did have a very informative and a very in insightful session on the menace of tobacco and alcohol marketing last week. Um, and today, uh, for today's session, we will be focusing on the tactics used by the unhealthy food industry and how the youth and youth organizations have been fighting back. Uh, Jenny, can I please request um, you to move on to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, before we begin, I would like to take a minute to go over the housekeeping for today's session. Um, we request all our participants to please stay muted during the sessions. Um, we'd also like to inform you that today's session is being recorded. Um, and lastly, we, we encourage you all to ask questions to our speakers. Um, to ask questions, we, you, you can simply leave them in the chat box where our team will be keeping an eye out. You can also raise your hand using the option provided on your Zoom at the bottom of your screen when you click reactions. Our session moderators will reach out to you to ask you questions. I would like, I would now like to hand over the space to today's moderator pair. Here's a technical advisor for Healthy Caribbean Coalition and is currently pursuing a degree in law. He's a youth advocate and a fierce defender of children and human rights. I look forward to you uh, to, to your moderating pair. Over to you. Thank you. Good morning. And thank you very much for our introduction. Let me just confirm that you all can hear me. Yeah? Brilliant. Um, so I'm happy to have us on for the session this morning, and I'm happy to have you join us for day two of our workshop. And today we are going over marketing to children. And one of the things we want to focus on or work on is to try to build the capacity of youth health advocates to be able to identify and challenge industry tactics to marketing health, health harming products to children and youth. Um, and I'm sure you have seen, and we'll discuss it over the course of today, those examples of fast corporations, um, tobacco corporations, marketing to children in a very sinister and pervasive way. And I think oftentimes persons don't understand it. Um, but when you're able to provide that very clear example of it uh, and show people this, this is how it's working, we're hoping that that can help to lead to some more advocacy. So part of our objectives is to also build the awareness and understanding of young persons um, and civil society partners of the alcohol and tobacco and unhealthy food and beverage industry uh, and their playbook to gain the trust of young people. We want to help to build your awareness and understanding of the harmfulness of these tactics and also to explore the importance of watching, you know, keeping an eye out to see when these corporations are doing these things so that you can understand and appreciate your responsibility to protect our most vulnerable population our children. We also want to work on developing a call to action from youth advocates across the globe. And you can see throughout the course of this session, we have representatives from all across the Caribbean. We have some partners from Europe. We have some partners from India. So I, I know I started by saying good morning, but I'm also aware that it's good evening. It's good afternoon for some persons and even good night. Um, so we'll continue today to have those discussions to help build your awareness. Um, and just so you understand where we've been, so you can understand where we're going, we're going to have a quick recap of last week's session, um, where we had another approach and another look at the rights of children and protecting children and their health. So I'm going to invite Danielle to share a quick video um, so that you can get a better idea and picture of what has been happening, what is going on, and where we need to go. Danielle? First, we started off with a game, Have You Ever Seen? For those of you who missed it, let's try playing again. Ready for the game, Have You Ever Seen? You're gonna need two icons for this game, a raised hand as well as a red flag. Remember, a red flag is a sign of trouble. If you have seen any of the scenarios we're about to mention, I wanna see you put a raised hand or red flag in the chat. Are you ready? Red flag. <laughs> 
spotted. Red flag. <laughs> Say it with me. Ah! Yup, that's a red flag. Ah! Can anyone say red flag? Ah! Red flag. And then we had our first presentation by Laura, who told us why we do need to talk about Bruno. After that presentation from Laura, we had a presentation by Mrs. Nicole Foster who spoke about the children's right to health and the state's obligation to respect, protect, and fulfill that right. We then went straight into Dr. Bonnie's presentation and she gave us a really good overview of how the tobacco industry has been targeting young people for years. And how they've been doing that most recently with e-cigarettes. We then heard from the Caribbean's perspective. We heard from Mrs. Barbara McGaw, who told us about what is happening with tobacco and youth in the Caribbean. Youth in the Caribbean have the ability to purchase cigarettes even though they're underage. Check out these stats. And she also told us that the tobacco industry is sponsoring youth smoking prevention programs across the region. We also heard from Mariana from Brazil. In 2011, there was a total ban on alcohol advertising except through the display products at the point of sale. The industry took advantage of this and would set up pods at festivals where we know young people are and promoted products in other ways. And then we had Gustavo from Tobacco Free Kids who was telling us about the tobacco promotion expenditure. Isn't this wild? He also mentioned again, as Dr. Bonnie was saying, how the tobacco industry is now promoting e-cigarette use. Check out these ads. And then we had Mike from Ovendi who spoke to us about the harm of big alcohol's marketing tactics on young people. How intentional they are with how they market and even how strategic they are, like using humor. Thank you. 
He also reminded us of the power of pop culture and alcohol's marketing. And then we heard again from the Caribbean perspective from Professor Maharaj, who started off by sharing some studies, even this one. Each dollar the alcohol industry spends on youth advertising, young people drink 3% more each month. He also spoke to us about some challenges that the Caribbean is facing. For example, that the alcohol industry used the opportunity to build brand loyalty during the COVID-19 pandemic. We then heard from Viviana from Costa Rica, who told us about two cases there. One where there's a change in policy where alcohol could be sold 24 hours all day long. This allowed for alcohol to be sold near corner stores, near schools, and there was an increase in alcohol consumption among young people. There was also a policy change that allowed for marketing in sport. Policymakers actually indicated support for these cases. But then Costa Rica Saludab hosted petitions and called on policymakers to make a difference. And then we had Tina from Riday tell us about how youth have been monitoring tobacco-free films and TV in India. It's been thought that the monitoring by youth may have been a key factor in decreased rates of tobacco depiction in films and TV. And last but not least, we ended with Dr. Marsha, who told us about her Stanford Youth Action Board members, young people who are trying to inspire other young people on anti-tobacco issues. She also told us about the creative ways to engage with young people on social media. After that recap of day one, are we ready for day two? Thank you very much, Danielle. And I think we can see just from that video um, that the marketing tactics are very, very creative, like super, super creative. When you think about the fact that you could be on social media and I know there was the game spot the red flags and I spot many red flags. I can think of a million and one celebrities who are marketing unhealthy alcohol beverages. I can think of a million and one advertisements that I've seen in and around my schools. I can think of a million and one things um, and how the industries are being very, very creative in their tactics. And I think it's important that we understand, as was discussed last week, that to combat these creative marketing strategies, we have to find creative advocacy strategies. So how do we communicate the information to young people in a safe, effective um, and direct way? How can we make it work out? Um, and I, I really, really love that we're continuing that discussion this week um, particularly looking at the protection of the rights of our children. Many persons don't understand that, you know, it's a child's right to health um, and necessarily it's a breach of children's rights to have them exposed to these type of marketing um, practices. 